it's a nasty collapse. And, and I think the biggest thing to understand here is that this is this is all about human psychology, right? So in 2021, we saw stocks like GameStop, AMC, Bed Bath Beyond soar to ridiculous heights and then come back in. And what we've seen here is that it's the Wall Street bets crowd has tried to relive the magic of 2021. So they've started to pump these things. They started to run. We saw them go up precipitously, but not as high as 2021. And they've come crashing in so, so fast. This is the psychological part of it, is that you have number one, the same investors that were in last time, they got burned when the collapse occurred. So they're much quicker to pull the trigger. Last year, you had months of people saying, hey, I'm never going to sell. I'm going to hold on. You had the apes. You had all the, I mean, there's all of these things going on, right? And ultimately, that is no longer intact because human psychology remembers the collapse and people are selling into it. The last thing to remember is that this was inevitable because the Fed in 2021 was printing money. The government was sending checks. All these things, the Fed was basically leaving interest rates at zero or near the near the zero marker and that helped these stocks run now you have a totally different scenario you're in a bear market and that means that these stocks did not have the same flight that they would have last year so not surprising to see the collapse i hope too, not too many people got burned on this but nonetheless it is scary the falls that these things have had but in terms of talking to people and saying, follow the herd, you never want to be a follower of the herd. Occasionally it works. It gives you a false sense of security. Generally, when you're following people, you're going to end up losing, especially when it's the herd mentality. Um, the smart money gets in at the beginning of the run, the dumb money later on, and you never want to be in that crowd that's chasing at the end. So avoid the hype, essentially. So, so what we saw is Friday when the equity market sold off, you got this nasty candle. It did close below this channel. So look at the beauty of this channel here, how we've been hovering up and down inside of it really since June. But the negative here is that we saw a close below. Now, you haven't confirmed, but as far as I'm concerned, this is a very, very nasty little pattern formation and it's likely we're going to go retest this yellow trend line here which happens to be the high from 2017 right here that's going to be a big line in the sand if we break that then you see that move down that i've been calling for as my secondary target you know my first target was 20,000. we talked about it last year in dubai when when i was there in, in october 2021 we said 20,000. now i say it's going to actually go lower than that next stop is going to be 12 to 13,000. so we are headed lower and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a rough road along the ways here and, and to be fair, that he's he's correct on that, and, and I actually have that same long term view. I'm a big long term bull. I'm just a shorter term macro and you know macro economist looking at the cycles and everything like that. So the beauty of twelve to thirteen thousand, it gets us to that eighty to eighty five percent correction that Bitcoin has done every single cycle. Uh, so that kind of gives us a basis of what to look for. It's also a strong technical support. But you're right. I mean, if you're a long term investor and you're not going to look at it for ten years or five years. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to, this is the key, right? You have to be able to weather the emotional storm because I know a lot of investors out there, they might buy in at 22 or 21. And when they're down 40% at 12, they might panic and unload because you're going to hear a lot of negativity out there. And if you, you have to be able to control that and, and shut it out, and then you're okay to do that. But if you're someone who's very emotional, and you're going to exit the trade at that point, and then it goes to 50,000, then 100,000, that's not a good scenario for you to be in. So if you have emotional control, that's fine. Start inching in. I also advocate for dollar cost averaging. Buy a little here at 21, buy a little bit more at 18, buy some more at 15 and so forth, versus just going all in at one specific level. I don't think so. Not at this stage of Bitcoin's life cycle. I think down the line, you will see a, a kind of a difference and, and Bitcoin and the crypto market start to emerge. But right now, it is tied to a risk asset. I know a lot of people said in 2021, oh, it has nothing to do with the stock market. It'll go up when inflation goes up and the markets sell off. We obviously learned that that wasn't the case. So I'm in the camp that we're going to see uh, crypto sell off with the stock market. I have a big downside move coming later this year in the stock market. And that's going to be the catalyst to really take us to that 12, 13,000 marker on Bitcoin. And I actually think that Ethereum is very likely going to head down to this next target around $645. So I have it priced in. That should be the, the level that Ethereum hits when Bitcoin hits 12 to 13,000. How did you come up with that yellow line? 
uh, key major support. It was the beginning of the big bull market. This would be 100% retrace to the start of that bull market. Major support right here as well. Before we continue, help us clicking that YouTube like button and subscribe now to our channel. This shows the algorithm that you valued this information. And it helps us spread that message. Sharing is caring. And now, let's continue. I have bad news for you. If you're not rich by now, you're screwed. And if you're in debt, you're even double screwed. How so, you might wonder. Well, the sad truth is that you're working your whole life to make someone else rich. The mega corporations, the banks, the politicians, everyone is getting richer. They get your money. And what is even worse, they get your time, they get your life. You are not even in a rat race, you're in a financial prison. But what could a solution for you look like? Honestly, I don't know, but I know what a solution for me would look like. It's very simple. I use whatever money I have and I multiply it with 1000. This could make my life much easier and probably yours as well. If you have $1,000 available and multiply this with 1000, I believe that this could solve some financial issue for the one or the other. Of course, if you're ugly, you would have to multiply it with much more than 1000. My name is Marco Stan and this is what I decided to do. I decided to 1000x my money. This is not a joke. I know what you may be thinking. You know, what, what, what is this guy talking about? You know, how should this work? This is not possible. Well, I made a detailed video where I laid out my plan. And some clever folks might even want to look at this plan and copy it and do exactly what I do. This is just a little hint on the side. You have two options. You leave, you forget what you have seen. You do whatever you're doing and you hope that somehow you get some other results. Good luck with that. Or you click the link below the video. You enter your email address because I'm not showing this to everybody. You at least watch my video on how I plan to 1000x my money. The choice is yours. Make the right choice. Join me. See what a different future you could have. See at least how I intend, how I plan to do the thousand X. So click on the link below, enter your email address, and I see you on the other side. Your Marco Stan.